8.1, numbers 9 and 11. Find the square of each radical expression. So we're going to be using this property over here in the yellow box. For any non-negative value of a, if you square this radical, you'll get the insides back out again. All right, so we're not going to use this property when we have a negative on the inside. But if we have a positive number or zero, it works fine. And let's take a look at how that might work for square root of 5. If we're squaring it, and you'll be able to see how this makes sense. If I take the root 5 and I square it, what I'm really doing is saying root 5 times root 5. And that's the same thing as having root 25. And that gives me 5 out again. And we're going to see a lot more about this property right here that I just did out in the next section. But for now, it just kind of shows you why it's okay to just kind of cancel out the root when you're squaring something. So let's take a look at the first example, minus root 20. Well, if we square it, then we have the square acting on the negative and on the root. So first of all, let's take a look at what happens with the negative. We get two negatives. They cancel out and give us a positive. All right, so that negative is going to plus out, and then we get root 20 squared. And radical and square cancel each other out when we have a positive number inside. So our answer is 20. <coughs> then on the next one, number 11, if we have root 7x to the 9th plus 7th, and we want to square it, Well, the root and the square cancel each other out, and we get the insides. And that's how you do it. No matter what you've got on the inside, so I could say square root of anything. And remember, the anything has to be non-negative, squared, gives you the anything back again. <coughs> 